Something is seriously wrong with silver, and in something that I hadn't really thought of before, but now it's the newest threat against this metal. It's not good. We'll discuss it in this video as we explore. Some of the market dynamics of silver's price movement we can kind of make sense of. You know, there's a lot of things that can move the metal one way or another. Of course, the recent election is playing a pretty large role in silver's price falling. All of the markets are down as I record this video, by the way. We very well may need to start thinking about $30 silver again. And it's not just because of the perception of the next administration. There is something greater at play that has to do with politics as well, presumably because of what the presidential candidate, who is now the president-elect, thinks about this. Boom! Bitcoin. That's right. I think we have to take into account Bitcoin as it's reached an all-time high yet again and exploded in price after President Donald Trump won re-election again. This is something that we have to consider. As I record this video, a Bitcoin is up dramatically today, and it's also um, silver is down dramatically today. Could it be that uh, Bitcoin is stealing silver's thunder? Not that silver had much thunder, but it did perform quite well um, over the year. So did gold. But both those metals are pulling back since the election. And could they pull back even more? I just don't know. In other words, people are starting to get into Bitcoin because Donald Trump spoke at the Bitcoin conference. And I mentioned that Bitcoin's market cap has exceeded silver's. And I talked about it in that video. And Donald Trump mentioned silver in that conference. And this is something that very well could play uh, a role in people looking for decentralized assets. Now, Bitcoin is going to be essentially something that is going to be probably pushed more and more and have the blessings of the new administration. This very well could steal more of silver's thunder. Now, how can you get in on Bitcoin? Usually it does require you to have an online presence. And of course, whenever you buy silver, well, it requires a physical presence. You can buy it online. You can also buy the exposure to silver's price by buying exchange traded products for silver. But people are looking to the next and new shiny thing, and that's Bitcoin, and people are buying it like crazy. Now, it's trading at an all-time high, and, it, and it's poised to maybe even go even higher. And if, who knows, maybe Bitcoin will actually be used more and more in the next four years as money. Yes, I'm going to say it here. This is a threat to silver, I think. Um, and I, I, I hope it's not too big of a threat, but I do and am worried about that to some extent. Now, it doesn't really matter. This is probably the biggest fear that I have with uh, Bitcoin in competition with silver and to some extent gold. But remember, when it's all said and done and in the end, it doesn't matter really what this does or what this does. It really just matters about what this is. In other words, it's very present. The reality of what silver is, is the fundamental aspect that I'm holding on to. Um, because in the end, nothing will replace it. It requires no counterparty risk. The dollar does require counterparty risk, although it's quite minimal. And Bitcoin certainly requires county party or, or it requires a counterparty the dollar requires a counterparty so does bitcoin none of that will change silver though on the other hand exists for what it is and has been for thousands of years that is unchanging well you just may be going through a time of of well essentially we could potentially run into a, a period of time where silver kind of languishes around this price range around $30, a little bit less, if we continue to see excitement in Bitcoin. I think largely that uh, this could wear out. People realize, you know what, I'm getting in on Bitcoin, it's pretty volatile, I'm gonna be losing a little bit of money. 
so they may get out of it. Um, and the excitement of it could wear off. Silver has been steady. In other words, you know, it's not a flashy thing like some of these uh, uh, alternate coins or cryptocurrencies out there, NFTs and the like. Uh, it is a tried and true thing, especially in the physical form. So I hope that people will continue to hold it. And we also have to think about if the economy does recover, and we just start to see improvements there, and demand for silver picks up, it's got to reflect in the price. But we may not see it climb as dramatically as we'd hoped. I just posted a video saying that silver and gold are going to be going up, and it won't be a good thing because of the economic situation that we find ourselves in now that could actually worsen into 2025. And I believe that is going to kind of buoy up silver, uh, even though there is some competition with Bitcoin. Uh, and I'm still predicting $35 silver by the end of the year. In fact, some of the analysis that I've been reading is saying, hey, we've got, we're looking at this $30 level here. Um, and we're pulling back the breakdown below the 50-day moving average, only to turn around to show signs of life. But this is a market that continues to see a lot of noise. And I think this is adding to the noise right now, Bitcoin. And that could play a bigger role, an annoying role, as we see persistence with that, those trades and how the new administration perceives Bitcoin. Um, and... This is something that we recognize that there's a quite a bit of support just below what could come into the picture. And that is the crucial $30 level. That $30 level, of course, is a, is a large, round, psychologically significant figure. I think there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be very discouraged if we see it fall below that price, myself included. However, that's just the price. And if the price falls, well, that provides a buying opportunity. A buying opportunity to consider and that's why uh, the sponsor here is summit metals and they have really good deals on silver products i hope you will consider them uh summitmetals.com but you have to think about uh, what the opportunities lie with silver if the price falls especially below 30 dollars but also hold on diamond hands are what's needed during times like these now we only had a few days of the silver price falling fairly significantly, plunging for two times since the election. However, that does not mean it's going to stay and keep falling. I think there's going to be some support there to move it back up. And when you think about it, if the 200-day moving average continues to raise towards there, it's probably worth noting that the, the essentially the uh, we're going to see it kind of move and roll over to the oversold region. If that happens... If we could break above $32.50 again, that is the support level that I've been talking about consistently on this channel for the past month or so. If we can see that move right back up there again, we could see that $35 silver. And we could see it move there by the end of the year. we got to watch inflation. Some of these numbers have come out. And the geopolitical situation, which in some way could get worse before it gets better. I mean, we'll see. Uh, remember, we're still under the current administration and under their policies and worldview. So there's a lot of things ahead we have to watch out for. But in the end, silver maintains what it has always been for thousands of years. And those fundamentals have not changed one bit. And one thing that has changed is just uh, the price. And the price is going to move up. It's going to move down. You're going to see uh, sentiment shift. You're going to see the psychology of the markets play its way through. And this is something that we have to be agile and we have to move along with the markets. The markets move. The reality of the markets is something that uh, we have to shift our, our perception of during the course of that time. I am stubborn in feeling that silver is going to reach $35 by the end of the year. But it becomes less likely to occur as we see more movements like we've seen over the past couple of trades here. So uh, watch out and pay attention. And we have to brace for the potential of lower silver prices before they creep back up again. 
I really don't think we're going to see it fall much below 30 if we do see it subside a bit. But we could see a, a very long period again of sideways trading, maybe a year or two, uh, where silver won't be as exciting. But you know what? In my view, silver is always exciting. I'm a huge fan of having it and holding it, and that nothing changes what it means to hold a 10-ounce bar in your hand and feel that weight and understand that it is a, a commodity. It's also a monetary metal. It also has over 10,000 uses. Who knows how much silver this could, um, could impact to help your everyday lives. That is not changing. Silver is a metal that uh, continues to see very close levels of the supply uh, uh, expedience. And, you know, we're going to people spending the, the supply of it to the point where demand uh, over outstrips supply. That very well could happen very, very soon if it's not already occurring. Different institutions have different opinions on that metric. But one thing is for sure, silver remains a constant. The price, though, does not. When we realize that and we come to accept that fact, well, it makes life easier because we aren't emboldened or necessarily tied to any given um, price, direction, or movement. Because in the long run, it's about having a store of value outside of the system from which we find ourselves apart. That system operates under the Federal Reserve Act of 1913, December the 23rd to be exact, uh, passed in the uh, right on, right near the recess of the Congress, you know, that's how they pushed it through. It would be nice to see that institution done away with, but that's going to take some doing in order to make that happen. But silver, you can never do away with. It's here forever. So brace for what's coming. But in the end, whatever is coming or has made its way into your hands, you just got to hold on to it. That's really the bottom line. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below. Hope you found this video informative, insightful, and educational. I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for taking the time to watch and to encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.